Hello, my name is Shlomi. Uh, I'm here with Django for WindDriver. WindDriver is a driver development toolkit for USB PCI and PCIe. It is cross-platform compatible between Windows, Linux, Linux ARM, and Mac OS. Basically, what it allows you to do is generate a fully-fledged driver, a skeletal driver, for your hardware, uh, regardless of silicone vendor, within minutes of work. Uh, driver here, for what, for example? Uh, a driver for a PCI card, a USB device. It's basically going to depend uh, on your project. So it allows you to communicate with your custom hardware uh, within minutes of work and verify your resources, as well as then create a driver that you can then actually uh, operate and manipulate your device with. Because that's a big trouble to get the drivers to work sometimes. Yeah, and very, this is a solution? So it's a, it's a very convenient solution. Uh, again, within minutes of work, and it will generate this in a few different languages. So you can do it in C Sharp, C, C++, Java, or Python. And again, as I said, it is a cross-platform compatible solution. Uh, we have a sort of a setup here that just kind of shows you what WindDriver can do. If you'd like to see a quick demo, I can show you. It's important for me to say also that uh, what we have here is a project that uh, was generated by us account managers and not by the developers of the product. So for context, I took a introduction to Python course twice in college, failed it twice, and I was still able to create a working driver uh, using our driver wizard and our WinDriver software. So that's your app there? Yep, so this is the driver wizard. I'm gonna show you what it looks like when you first open it up. So this is just the camera feed that we have here so that you can see it um, all at once. You can also see it on the bigger screen if it's yeah. easier for you. Okay. Same, same picture, exactly. So we're gonna go ahead and open the WinDriver wizard. So when you first open the wizard, you're gonna be greeted with this screen. You can go ahead and open a new project. And when you open a new project like this, you're gonna be able to see all the devices that are connected to your development machine. Uh, for our demo, we have it in a USB Thunderbolt converter cage, uh, but it could also be directly to a PCI or PCIe slot. This is just for convenience for our demonstration. So you can see here that when you first open the driver wizard, you can see everything that's attached to your development machine and you can see some information about the card. Uh, ordinarily, you would select the card you want to develop for and click next. If you're developing for Windows, you'd go ahead and generate an INF, which is no small task in and of itself. Uh, but we've already done that, so we're going to go ahead and close this and we're going to go ahead and open the project. If we quickly open the project, I have to close the generated app first, I apologize. So we're going to go ahead and open the project and it's going to take us to our configuration space. So when you first get to the configuration space, you're going to be able to see all the information about your relevant card. This is basically an expansion of what we saw before. Uh, you can see here that we have access to our bars, uh, where we can edit them and add them, and so on and so forth. A new feature that we really kind of are implementing on this first, for the first time, uh, is the predefined actions. Now these predefined actions basically allow you to uh, edit your access registers and lock them in as predefined actions. Now these predefined actions are our first step towards a no-code solution. So here you can see that directly from the wizard, without writing a single line of code, I can control my card and I could turn these LEDs on or off or just to the right, just to the left, or just the edges. My personal favorite because you know they're metal. Uh, and then we can go ahead and turn those back on for demonstration purposes. So I just did that all through the wizard without writing a single line of code. Uh, if you have a device that supports interrupts like this one does, you can listen to interrupts through the wizard and you can see here that we're already listening to interrupts. Sophia, if you could please press that card for me. Uh, when Sophia pressed the interrupt button, you can see that we got an interrupt directly in our WinDriver wizard. And you can also see that the card reacted, right? Based on what we set up here. So the next stage after you have this environment set up the way you want would be to generate the code. Here you can see that we have several partnerships where we offer samples. These samples offer uh, the IP functionality uh, directly within the generated code. Again, we do, we do recommend that you edit this code once you generate it, but it's all there and it should work. Um, it should give you a good base to create that code later on. You can see that we support same, several languages. Um, C Sharp, C++, for some reason isn't in here, but it should be Python, Java, and C. And you can see here that we support various IDEs. Uh, 
all the Microsoft Visual Studio, Linux make, uh, make file, and CMake make file. Uh, if I go ahead and show you what the generated code looks like, so once you click generate code, you'd be generating this code. And again, for our demonstration, we've done this ahead of time. But here you can see the generated code. Now, the predefined actions that we created are already in here. Uh, and they're pre-existing in this code, as well as any modifications that I would like to make. So that would happen right here. Uh, from here, what I would do is I would compile this code, and I'm going to show you what that would look like. So once we compile this code, we would end up with, with a user app. I have to close the wizard so that I have full functionality. But I did that on purpose because I wanted to show you another utility that we do offer with WinDriver, with is, which is the debug monitor. So here you can see that the debug monitor is monitoring everything that I've done with the card, including the fact that I accidentally uh, tried to do a resource overlap. So I'm going to put that aside. I'm going to go ahead and open my application. And this would be what we get once we compile the code. Now you can see that my predefined actions already exist within this app, and I'm already controlling my card directly from the app. Now again, I would like to stress, we have yet to write a single line of code for this application. I'm just gonna show you one more thing real quick. I'm gonna show you that if I again go to listen to interrupts, I enable these interrupts, and I press this button here for my interrupts, you're gonna see the single line of code that I wrote for this project. You're gonna see that as we did before, we have a physical interpretation of the interrupt here, which we set up in the wizard. The application got an interrupt. Uh, you can see that it counts the interrupts as well. And this is the single line of code that we added to our project, which was Embedded World 2024 Nuremberg. So now, th there's a lot of devices in the world. And you work with everything? So WinDriver can recognize everything. Um, we do have partnerships with certain cards, which we do offer additional functionality for. Sensors, cameras, whatever? Whatever whatever you like, that's where the magic happens. Uh, but it's important for me to know that here, we did this single line of code, which is just a string because we wanted something that we can demonstrate, but a developer could put anything as that interrupt handler. It could be um, uh, an instruction for a rocket to decouple from a fuselage. It could be an emergency system for a vehicle. It could be the start of a DMA uh, operation. It could be whatever you want. You know, the sky's the limit, and it's limited only by the imagination of the developer. What's the business model? It's a subscription-based model. Uh, we offer various pricing depending on your circumstances, but it's a subscription model where you have full support from us. You get access to the latest version every time. And you know, as operating systems evolve and change, we try to keep up and support them. Do you have many users? Um, it's in the users, what is it, tens of thousands at this point, I believe. We have many, many users across the globe. Yeah, we've existed since 1997. Uh, we have users all around the globe from the United States, uh, here in Europe, many users. So we're all over the place. Uh, you'd be surprised how many places, how many objects, how many cards, and how much functionality is actually powered by WinDrive. And a lot in the embedded world. And a lot in the embedded world, more than you may think.